Hello everyone, it's Economics Mike. Um, I just wanted to let you know here, I've seen a news article posted by Bloomberg. Now, this is very interesting because this is one of the first major uh, technically big news agencies of corporate media that's coming loose and, and now saying stuff about silver. Very interesting. Let's take a look at this. It says, silver looking cheap, lures investors, prompting decline in ratio to gold. Haven't we heard that now? It says, uh, the ratio of gold to, gold to silver dropped to a three-week low after gold's rally to the highest level in eight weeks prompted some investors to buy the white metal. An ounce of gold bought as little as 64.96 ounces of silver today. The lowest amount since August 5th, according to Bloomberg calculations, which is actually correct. Uh, silver has outperformed the yellow metal since August 23rd, gaining 6 point, gaining 6% compared with gold 1.4% gain, as investors bought the white metal because of its uh, relative cheapness to gold. Uh, it says um, silver is unique in that it is a precious metal and an industrial metal. The executive or director of commodities of ABN, uh, Amro Bank, NV in Hong Kong said today, gold is traditionally viewed as a safe haven, but silver is never far behind as a second choice. Goes on to say, silver for an immediate delivery rose as much as 1.1% to $19.11 an ounce, the highest price since June 28th, and last traded at $19.05 at 3.33 p.m. in Singapore. Gold was little changed today after climbing as high as $1,241.50 an ounce yesterday, the highest price in eight weeks. Holdings in iShares Silver Trust, the biggest exchange traded fund backed by silver, increased on August 24th for the first time in six weeks. Uh, the metal doubles as a store of value for investors concerned about the economy and raw material. Uh, as a raw material. Uh, industrial applications include electrical conductors and batteries account for about half of demand. Looking cheap. And then this is only a few paragraphs. Silver is looking cheap and we're seeing strong investment demand for small ingots as well as good industrial demand for solar panel makers. Uh, Dick Poon, Hong Kong based manager of Precious Metals Trading and Hureas uh, LTD said today, the solar industry will consume up about 1,500 metric tons, 48 million ounces this year. This year, folks. Poon estimates. Uh, even if investors are expecting an ever downturn, there will always be demand for an alternative source of energy, said Poon. We could see prices back above $20 very soon. Silver last traded at more than $20 an ounce in March of 2008. And there's only three more very short paragraphs. Silver lagged behind gold this month through August 23rd, losing 0.1% compared with the yellow metal's 3.8% gain in the, in the previous period as investors turned to bullion to preserve wealth on concern that global economic recovery was weakening. We're bullish on both silver and gold, ABNAs and G, even through We've seen more festival demand from India in the past years because of higher gold prices. Silver can never replace gold in that market. They may buy less, but they will still buy gold, and that still could uh, keep prices supported. Uh, and then just goes on to say real quick, it says, The wedding season in India, the world's largest gold consumer, runs from November to December, and from late March through early May. So now that signifies a little bit to why gold would be in high demand later in the year. And also signifies why precious metals and, and tomb kind of run up a little bit. So now, this is yet another example. Now it's starting to hit mainstream media of the more unpopular ones, but nevertheless, still popular. So, it's starting to get to the point where the cat is starting to come out of the bag, folks. And uh, it's looking as if, uh, and real quickly, I, I played a video earlier today. Um, 
I didn't know how it would sound on, on everyone else's end uh, versus mine. Uh, but I do admit uh, I had a few comments in that. It was David Morgan. Just It was like a minute and a half video. And basically he had said that it was very uh, interesting that there wasn't really a whole lot of, if any, short covering taking on by commercial shorts. And in fact, uh, when it came to the precious metals, particularly silver, uh, that's why he said it didn't seem like anyone was short covering. And it seemed like it was a new buyer in the market. Now, that's very interesting because if it was only one or two major buyers that had some moving power um, and silver moved that much, um, we're looking at an astronomical gain in the near future, folks, because you got to keep in mind that uh, I don't know what the percentages are, but I think only 6% of uh, metal investors actually hold physical. Uh, the rest of the total allotment uh, does not hold physical. Uh, so physical uh, ownership will start to pick up. Um, and David Morgan also had said that, um, that this was the first time where silver actually, even though a slight gain, um, silver had gained during an options expiry day. Now that's very, very noteworthy because we have not seen this in a long, long time. So I wanted to advise you of this because obviously something is different at this point in time when it comes to silver and gold. Also, I did some other uh, comparison videos. Um, I think the videos were called uh, $500 uh, upon the purchasing power or silver bullion and the, and the purchasing power upon $500 or something like that. Uh, in my account here, you know, take a look uh, at those videos. And basically, uh, what I had stated there, and what the, not my opinion, based upon the facts, from 07 through 2009, and leading into now 2010, at the end of every year, or at the end quarter, okay, divide the year up in, in four sections. The last quarter of each year, always consistently rose in price except for 2008. 2008 we all know that was fundamental textbook fiscal deflation. Okay, And there's a lot of people getting caught up in this head fake thinking that we're going to have fiscal deflation with the markets plummeting meaning that precious metals are also going to plummet. It's not going to happen that way. Okay, it, You would have to ask yourself this question if you believed in that. You would have to believe that people during an economic crisis would be running to a fiat currency where a sovereign debt risk based upon too much debt within one country would want to flood to a currency thinking that that currency is going to maintain its value in purchasing power when global governments are printing currency like it's going out of style. You'd have to, you'd have to believe that then if you believe that precious metals are going to fall and fiscal deflation is going to force everything down again along with the metals. You'd have to believe that. I ain't going to believe it for one second because I'm not buying this head fake. I'm not buying it. I have way too much education. I have way too much independent red education to know better than that. So, and you might ask yourself, well, what, what are we in then? What we're in is the declining of purchasing power, not right now through physical cash. Some of it and a portion of it, yes, is coming through physical cash, but a majority of it is coming through credit, quantitative easing, continuous printing and printing and creation of credit from the Federal Reserve System, depreciating the purchasing power of currencies. Therefore, the bond markets are not good to be in, so people go to the markets because they want to get some type of a gain. If you're in the treasuries, it's basically guaranteeing you a loss at the artificial low interest rates. That's why people are going to the market. And most of likely what's going to end up happening is you're going to see if they continue to inflate the situation, the market's going to rise, but precious metals are going to rise faster. Okay, So we're going to experience price deflation, which means that things buy with dollars minus commodities. Commodities, 
but dollar related assets. Flat screen TVs, uh, furniture, stuff like that, dollar denominated purchases or commodities. Commodities priced in dollars, it's, it's completely irrelevant. Uh, dollars uh, are going to be a lot less in purchasing power to purchase commodities such as gasoline, groceries, and precious metals, so forth, in commodities. So don't be fooled by the head fake. Um, we are not going to experience fiscal deflation. Like I said, you'd have to believe that scenario I told you. Uh, we are going to experience price deflation. Uh, and we are heading out of that, and we're heading from stagflation into price deflation and inflationary pressures. That is the change of atmosphere we're starting to head into as I speak. So uh, I wanted to give you a bunch of my thoughts on this, about silver, about David Morgan's uh, comments, and, and so forth. So that's it for now. Economics by Dick Later.